Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Sayyid Ali Mardan Azmi. Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will learn how we can evaluate iterated different angles. For this purpose, we will learn exercise 15.5, question number 18 from Thomas Calculus 12th edition book. Before start solving or learning this question number 18, first of all, we must know some basic terminologies related to triple integrals. In triple integrals, we have three variables involved and three integrals involved. Here, you can see the limits are 0 to 1, 0 to square root of e, e is the exponential function, and 1 to e. And we have to integrate s e raised to power s, natural log of r, natural log of t whole square over t, with respect to dt, dr, and ds. Now, which limits belong to which variable and which variable is our initial variable for the process of integration? We will learn this thing. Here, t, which is written in the most inner side of the integral, is called inner variable. Then, the limits of t are 1 to e. e is the exponential function here. Then, the variable which is written in the center is called central variable and its limits are 1 to square root of e. Then the variable which is written in the most outer side is called outer variable whose limits are 0 to 1. So in triple integrals, we will always start the process of integration with respect to most inner variable. Then on the outcomes of integration with respect to inner variable, we will perform or we will apply rules of integration with respect to central variable. Then on the outcomes of integration with respect to central variable, we will apply rules of integration with respect to outer variable. So it is an iterative process. We will start from most inner variable and we will move towards outer variable. That's why it is called iterated integrals. Please note that in multivariable calculus, whether you are doing partial derivatives or multiple integrals, when you are dealing with one variable, all other variables will behave like constant. For example, when you will start the process of integration with respect to t, here r and s and its function will behave like constants. So we have to integrate s e raised to power s natural log of r natural log of t whole square over t with respect to t first. So s e raised to power s natural log of r is constant with respect to t. So we can take it outside of the inner integral like this. s e raised to power s natural log of r limits for 1 to e. And we can rewrite natural log of t whole square over t as natural log of t whole square into 1 over t dt. Now, in order to solve this integral, we must know this formula. And what is this formula? If in the sign of integration, we have a function who has some power and derivative of function is available as a multiplier, then we will perform the integration as we will add 1 in the power of the function and divide with the same number. So the integration of f of x is to power n into f dash of x, where f dash is then the derivative of f of x is f of x is to power n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c is the constant of integration. Now if you apply this rule here, you can see the derivative of natural log of t is 1 over t, which is available here as a multiplier. So we can perform its integration as natural log of t whole power 3 over 3 by using this formula. In the next step, we will apply the limits, upper limit minus lower limit with the help of fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, natural log of E are the reciprocal of each other. They will cancel out. In the first bracket, we have 1 raised to power 3. In the second bracket, natural log of 1 becomes 0. So we have 1 by 3 common. And we are left with 1 by 3, limit from 0 to 1, limit from 1 to square root of e, s, e raised to power s, natural log of r, dr, ds. Now, in order to perform integration with respect to r, 
we need to we need to know this formula this is the formula for integration by parts and what is this formula if you have product of two function then if you cannot simplify these functions and you have to integrate them you will apply integration by parts as u integral of v with respect to that variable minus double integral of v multiplied by derivative of u with respect to r dr now let's look over here after completing the process with respect to most inner variable we have to apply rule of integration with respect to central variable our central variable is r here with respect to r s e raised to power s is constant so it remain as it is and you have to integrate natural log of r in integration we don't have any direct formula for the integration of natural log of r so we can write it as natural log of r into 1 so in this formula so in this formula you we can use u as natural log of r and v equal to 1 so that i can start the process of integration so in the next step i am going to apply the formula of integration by parts to integrate natural log of r by taking u as natural log of r and v equal to 1. And here it is. In the formula of integration by parts, I have replaced u with natural log of r and v with 1. Now, in the next step, I will perform the integration. Integration of 1 is r. Integration of 1 is r. Derivative of natural log of r is 1 over r. In the second integral, r and r will cancel out each other. And we have natural log of r into r minus 1 dr. In the next step, performing the integration, I have r into natural log of r minus r for the limits 1 to square root of e. In the next step, I will apply the limits with the help of fundamental theorem of calculus, upper limit minus lower limit. For upper limit, I have replaced r with square root of e where e is the exponential function and for load limit I have replaced r with 1. In the next step I will simplify it. Natural log of 1 is 0. So in the second bracket I have 0 minus 1. In the first bracket as square root means raised to power 1 by 2. So by using the property of log I can take this 1 by 2 before natural log. So I have square root of e over 2 into natural log of e minus square root of e. Now natural log and e are reciprocal of each other. They will cancel out and we have 1 here. So I am left with square root of natural log of e over 2 minus square root of e plus 1. Now square root of e over 2 minus 1 becomes minus square root of e over 2. So inside the bracket I have 1 minus square root of e over 2. It is constant. I can take it outside. I, I am left with Integral 0 to 1 as e raised to power at ds. And up till here, I have completed the process of integration with respect to central variable. Now I am going to apply rules of integration with respect to most outer variable, which is s. Now you can see we have a product of two terms here with respect to s, s into e raised to power s. So in order to perform its integration, I have to use integration by parts again. So here, I will use u as s and v as e raised to power s in the formula of integration by parts. So in this formula, I have replaced u with s and v with e raised to power s. So please remember, integration of e raised to power x is e raised to power x itself. So in the first term, I have s into e raised to power s. And in the second term, I have integral of e raised to power s. Derivative of s with respect to s is 1. Again, in the next step, the integral of e raised to power s become e raised to power s. So I have s into e raised to power s minus e raised to power s for limit 0 to 1. In the next step, I have applied fundamental theorem of calculus, upper limit minus lower limit. For upper limit, I have replaced s with 1. And for low limit, I have replaced s with 0. Please remember, e raised to power 0 is 1. So, in the first term, e raised to power 1 minus e raised to power 1 becomes 0. And this minus, minus 1 becomes 1. 
So my answer is 2 into square root of e over 6. I hope you have understood this question. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel and share this content with your fellows.